Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the MGC Pharmaceuticals Limited Annual General Meeting. Throughout this recorded meeting, attendees online will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question submitted today. However, all questions will be reviewed with responses published on the Investimeet company platform where it is appropriate to do so. I'll now like to hand you over to Executive Chairman Brett Mitchell. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning, everyone here in the UK. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, MGC Pharmaceuticals Annual General Meeting being held for the first time in, in London uh, following our recent dual listing. Also, good afternoon uh, and evening to those uh, Australian shareholders who are joining us uh, via the webinar. Uh, the board has uh, decided to hold our first AGM in London this year as acknowledgement of the company's significant UK investor base now and the expansion into our UK and European markets. Uh, we've also established a, uh, a, started to establish our new corporate team here in the UK over the last 12 months. Uh, for those who do not know me, other than the introduction, my name is Brett Mitchell. I'm the chairman of MGC's board of directors and chairing today's annual general meeting. Alongside me uh, on my right is uh, Robbie Zoma, the managing director and CEO, and non-executive chair, uh, non-executive director, sorry, and chair of the audit committee, Dr. Stephen Parker. Also attending by the by video link uh, are my fellow board members and non-executive directors, Nativ Segev, Dr. Ross Walker, and Mr. Evan Hayes. This annual general meeting is being recorded and broadcasted via the webinar facility to allow us as many MGC Pharma shareholders uh, across the UK, Australia and, and other jurisdictions to listen in. For the safety and security of all those present at the meeting, other cameras and re recording devices are not permitted. Recordings other than the companies via the webinar service are not authorised. Um, there being a quorum of shareholders present today, I now declare the annual general meeting open ask that all shareholders and their proxies ensure that they have registered their attendance with the MGC representative at the entrance of the meeting room. Shareholders and valid appointed proxies, corporate representatives and attorneys will have received a wide admission card on entry. Please note that only the persons issued a wide admission card are eligible to participate in the meeting and the poll asking questions and voting. I would also ask that everyone at this point in time turn off their mobile phones or place them in silent mode for the duration of the meeting. In terms of the order of business for the meeting, uh, we will we'll run through each resolution, which will be open for discussion for those eligible shareholders or representatives attending the meeting, prior to the motion being put to the floor. For all questions of a general nature, the, the floor will be open for discussion at the completion of ordinary business and following a, a, a an updated a new company presentation that Robbie Zoma will, will give to the meeting. Um, general questions will be dealt with and directed to the chair and dealt with after the, the company presentation by Robbie. In my capacity as chair of the meeting, I give notice that all resolutions that are being put to the meeting will be decided by a poll, and the poll in each resolution will be addressed as we run through the meeting. I will appoint uh, Angela Marie Graham, MGC CFO, as returning officer to conduct the polling in today's meeting. The proxy votes received prior to the meeting for each resolution will be displayed on the screen here at the meeting and via the webinar service at the time of each resolution is put to the meeting. Where the chair has been appointed as a proxy and is not given direction how to vote, in all cases, I intend to vote in favour of the resolution. Um, in terms of instructions for proxy forms, the share persons entitled to vote on the poll are all shareholders, duly appointed representatives and attorneys of shareholders, proxy holders who hold a white admission card uh, provided on entry. On the reverse of your admission card is your voting paper and instructions of how to conduct your vote. Proxy holders will have attached to their admission card a summary of proxy votes, which will detail their voting instructions. In, any, in respect of any open votes that a proxy holder may be entitled to cast, you need to mark a box beside the relevant motion to indicate how you wish to cast your open votes. Shareholders attending in person need also to mark a box behind the motion uh, in, in, uh, intending your, your voting uh, to cast your intended vote. If you require any assistance, please raise your hand and Angela Marie will be able to assist you. Uh, a copy of the notice of meeting convening this meeting has previously been sent to all shareholders and sets out in detail and nature the purpose of the resolutions before today's meeting. And accordingly, uh, I'll take the notice of meeting as being read. Uh, the first item for the, of, of ordinary business is the adoption of the annual financial report. Uh, so therefore, the first item of business today, which is not a formal resolution, is to receive and consider the annual financial report for the company 
for the financial year data, 30 June 2021, together with the declaration, uh, sorry, 2022, with the declaration of the director's, the director's report, remuneration report, uh, and the auditor's report. Although a formal resolution is not required in relation to the agenda not, not item number one, the board is willing to take any questions relating to the 2022 annual report at this point in time. Any questions? No, we will now proceed to resolution one. Resolution one, adoption of a remuneration report. Re resolution one is to consider, and if thought fit, to pass with or without amendment, the following resolution is a non-binding resolution, that for the purposes of section 250R2 of the Corporations Act, and for all other purposes, approval is given for the adoption of the remuneration report as contained in the company's annual financial report for the year ended 30 June 2022. The vote on this resolution is advisory only and does not bind the directors or the company. Are there any questions in relation to this resolution? Uh, being no questions in the room, I'll now refer shareholders to the screen displaying the proxy votes received uh, for this resolution prior to the meeting. Um, so we have 94.5% um, votes cast for the resolution. 3% vote against and 2.4% open. As previously noted, all voting resolutions before the meeting today will be conducted by poll. Can you please proceed marking the box beside the motion with how you wish to indicate to cast your vote for this resolution? Resolution two, re-election of director, Dr. Stephen Parker. Resolution two is to consider any thought, thought fit to pass with or without amendment. The following resolution is an ordinary resolution that for the purpose of clause 14.2 of the Constitution, listing rule 14.4, and for all other purposes, Dr. Stephen Parker, a director retires by rotation and being eligible, is re-elected as a director. Are there any questions in relation to this resolution? No, so we have received, I'll now uh, point everyone uh, to the, uh, the proxy tallies received, uh, where I'm happy to say that Dr. Stephen Parker received um, 97 per cent of, of proxy votes cast in favour for his re-election, 1 per cent against and 1.7 per cent open. I'll now put this resolution to a vote and ask you to mark your proxy cards how you wish to cast your vote. We'll now proceed to resolution number three uh, and as I have an interest in this resolution I will pass the chair to Robbie to deal with this resolution. Resolution number three. Um, thank you, Brett. And now we will move to the next item of business resolution number three, which deal with a re-election of Brett Mitchell as the director of MGC. Um, resolution number three, election of director Brett Mitchell um, to consider and if thought uh, to pass with or without amendments the following resolution as an ordinary resolution. Um, Resolution number three is that for the purpose of clause 14.2 of the Constitution and for all the purpose, Brett Mitchell as director, <coughs> retired by resolution and being eligible to re-elect as a director. Are there any questions in, uh, in the relation of the resolution? None in the room. I now refer to shareholder to the screen to display the received proxy vote. Um, in favor, 97.5. 4.04 against 1.2% and open 1.69. I'll put now to the resolution into a vote. Please proceed uh, with marking a box uh, mentioning, indicate how you wish to cast your vote in relation to this re resolution. We'll now proceed resolution number four, and I will pass now the chair back to Brett Mitchell. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, resolution number four is to approval of the 7.1A mandate under the ASX listing rules for placement capacity. This resolution four is to consider an if thought fit pass with the, as a special resolution that for the purposes of listing rule 7.1A and for all other purposes, approval is given to the company to issue up to that number of equity securities equal to 10% of the issued capital of the company at the time of the issue calculated in accordance with the formula prescribed in the listing rule 7.1A2 and all other terms and conditions set out in the explanatory statement. Are there any questions in relation to this resolution? Um, uh, I'll now refer the shareholders to the screen displaying received proxy votes, votes 
as this is a special resolution under ASX listing rules, you require a 75% majority to pass such a resolution, not 50%. Um, and in this case, uh, proxy votes received were 96% in favour, 1.8% against and 1.9% open. I'll now put this resolution to a vote. Can I please ask you to mark the box beside the motion and indicate how you wish to vote on your on your proxy, um, on, your, on your poll card. I'll now proceed to resolution number five. Resolution five is to, for the ratification of prior issue of convertible notes, to consider and if thought fit to pass with or without amendment the following resolution as an ordinary resolution, that for the purpose of ASX listing rule 7.4 and all other purposes, shareholders ratify the issue of 1.43 million convertible notes on the terms and conditions set out in the explanatory statement. Please note that a voting exclusion applies to this resolution. Details are set out in the notice of meeting. Are there any questions in relation to this resolution? No, I'll now refer shareholders to the screen um, displaying the pro received proxy votes for the resolution where we have 94% in favour, 4% against and 2% open. I'll now put this resolution to a vote. Can you please proceed to mark the box beside the, beside the motion to indicate how you wish to cast your vote in relation to this resolution? Resolution six is for the ratification of prior issue of shares to employees and consultants. To consider if thought fit to pass with or without amendment, the following resolution is an ordinary resolution that for the purposes of listing rule 7.4 and all other purposes, shareholders ratify the issue of 20 million shares on the terms and conditions set out in the explanatory statement. Please note that a voting exclusion applies to this resolution, details of which were set out in the notice of meeting. Are there any questions in relation to this resolution? No, I will now refer shareholders to the screen displaying the received proxy votes, where we have 93% in favour, 4.7% uh, against and 2% open. I'll now put this resolution to a vote. Can you please mark your box behind the spot, but beside the motion to indicate how you wish to cast your votes in relation to this resolution. Resolution number seven, adoption of employee securities incentive plan. To consider and if thought fit to pass with or without amendment the following resolution as an ordinary resolution that for the purpose of listing rule 7.2 exception 13b and for all other purposes approval is given for the company to adopt an employee incentive scheme in which is titled the employee securities incentive plan and for the issue of a maximum of 285 million securities under that plan on the terms and conditions set out in the explanatory statement under the new asx listing rules Please know that a voting exclusion applies to this resolution, details of which are set out in the notice of meeting. Are there any questions in relation to the resolution? Uh, no, so I will now refer shareholders to the screen displaying the proxy re uh, results. And we have 92.4% uh, voting for the resolution, 5% voting against, and 2.5% open. I'll now put this resolution to a vote. Can you please mark your proxy uh, poll cards for the motion, how you wish to vote in, re in respect to this resolution. Okay, can everyone now please uh, complete their proxy cards, um, ensure that you have your names filled out on the proxy cards and uh, we will just give it a couple of minutes and Angela and Marie will be able to collect the proxy cards. They, you've now got all the ones in the room? I do, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, as all voting cards have now been collected, I declare the poll closed. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, both here in the, in, the, in the AGM meeting room and those of you um, joining us via the webinar, that concludes the ordinary business of this meeting. And on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank you for your attendance uh, today and your con continued support of our company. Um, the results of the poll and the uh, proc and 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 of, of each resolution uh, will be announced shortly uh, in the coming hours on the ASX and LSE. Um, 
There was no special business received in writing by the company. Uh, and unless there's any form, uh, any further questions from the floor here, um, I will declare the formal part of today's AGM closed. And there's no further questions here, so I, I'm formally cl closing the meeting at this point in time. We will now move to the informal part of the meeting, which will be a presentation by our Managing Director and CEO, Robbie Zoma, um, and uh, which and this presentation will be released uh, on, on our company website and um, the ASX um, uh, shortly. Um, and uh, after the completion of Robbie's presentation, um, uh, we will then move to any questions that we've received from shareholders, either before or during the AGM, which we have, I know we've received a couple, uh, which uh, Tim will help us uh, uh, through uh, following the uh, completion of Robbie's presentation. Um, just before I hand over to Robbie, I'd just like to say on behalf of the board that um, we are uh, you know, very proud of the achievements of this company over the over the last 12 months and over the last two few years since we've been uh, moving from a transitional phase of a, a purely medical cannabis company, which is where we started, through to a, a medical cannabis and life sciences biopharma company and as you'll see today we've this is a a milestone moment for the company as we're now you know completed that transition uh and and the business is now fully focused on what following the achievements of the last 12 months uh on being a leading life sciences and pharma company still with the medical cannabis um you know business unit and 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 uh, background of our company um uh, is part core part of our operations and core part of our cash flows and revenues, but the strategic positioning of our company, which has been um, part of our focus and and evolution over the last few years, is to be a, a fully focused uh, life sciences and pharma business from plant inspired medicines, you know, led by our uh, cannabinoid based medicines, uh, Canapil and Cognican, and more recently. Um, Symmetra has come into the frame of that uh, to be our three leading products. Um, we've just recently launched a new website, uh, which uh, is a, is about the communication and positioning of our company now as a as a life sciences and pharma uh, pharma business. Uh, and as you'll see from today's presentation, um, this is the also the the new new positioning that that and, and the new focus of the company um, that will be the uh, the driver of of our resources and our expertise as we move forward. And this has only been achieved now in the completion of this transitioning by the last 12 months, um, the completion of the construction of our um, fully automated GMP pharma production facility in Malta, uh, which is completing its GMP uh, certification uh, process as as we speak uh, and will be done in the, in the coming uh, month or two. Um, the, the renewal about the GMP certification of our Slo Slovenian R and D and IMP production facility, um, the completion of our of the team we've put together um, with uh, people like Robert Clements, who's come from 20 years with here with us uh, and will join in the presentation from 25 years in the pharma industry, you know, joining our executive team, our clinical team, um, led by Nadia and Dr. Johnny Grunfeld. So with the completion of all this, which has been a work in progress over the last two years, we're now uh, at the point where we're ready to drive forward as a, as a very strong, a very farmer experienced with all the right pharma infrastructure from R&D, clinical trials and production in place to move forward as a, as a leading life sciences and pharma company. With that, I'll hand over to you, Robbie. Thank you very much. Um, good morning everybody and also good evening to our shareholders in Australia. Um, following to Brett's uh, explanation, MGC Pharma is now moving um, to his new uh, phase in life. We're transitioning from being a medical cannabis company uh, starting in tw uh, 2016 and moving now to be completely pharmaceutical company under the life science sector. Uh, our vision is to have a global impact uh, on untreated medical condition and disease. We're looking on rare indication. We're looking on providing better quality of living and better treatment to our patient. 
we're doing it by um, plant-inspired uh, medication that we're developing as an innovative uh, medicine by our company. And basically, we're creating a new era of new medications that we will bring to the market. Our key achievement uh, to date, of course, are the plant-inspired ingredient pharmaceutical formulation uh, led by Artemix that is in the most progress clinical trials uh, following after Cognican and Canapil. Uh, right after we have our uh, research hub uh, position in Slovenia and in Israel, uh, together with the management of our clinical trials in-house, uh, we build an experienced pharma and research team, uh, both in Slovenia, UK, and Israel, to help us to lead the company forward. Uh, we are fully a uh, GMP pharma integrated uh, company uh, with advanced clinical and innovative uh, program. Uh, we completed uh, recently the acquisition of ZAM platform and app uh, to allow us to bring better treatment to our patient uh, through our clinics, but also to help MGC Pharma to collect more data in real time from large uh, patient groups that allow us to advance our clinical program as equivalent to phase four in a proper pharma company. And we have diversified team um, as part of our core value of uh, equality with more than 60% uh, women in the company. Uh, MGC Pharma has a unique uh, market proposition as we are looking uh, on our sector coming from the herbal medicine or the medical cannabis market and positioning into the pharma market. MGC tapping exactly this two world and creating unique and innovative medicines that are basically a pharma market inspired by plant. Uh, this gives us a uniqueness in the market and also open us into a much larger uh, market of the life science and the pharmaceutical sector. The company have The company have a global footprint, starting with our new headquarters in the UK as part of the listing on the London Stock Exchange, uh, with the production site in Slovenia, uh, GMP Pharma facilities that produce our IMP and its semi-automated uh, facility, alongside research and development uh, facility also in Slovenia, allow us to develop new formulation and to take the future of the company we're bringing more innovative medicine and our recently uh, new completion of the construction and commissioning of our Maltese facility, a fully automated uh, facility that's tapping into our activities in Europe and allow us to fulfill our needs and production capability in-house. Um, aside of that, we have our Israeli uh, research hub uh, with our CRO company, Medicanel, that allow us to manage and to control uh, our clinical trial program, as well as to provide uh, clinical research management to third parties. Uh, following with that, our existing office in Australia and the ASX listing as an Australian company will still have our main offices in Perth. Alongside our global footprint, of course, we have our distribution network uh, that reinforce our activities as a pharmaceutical company our first uh, partner in United States, AMC Holding, will help us to lead uh, the registration of Symmetra uh, with the FDA, uh, followed by Sciences Rare, a European leading company uh, with entering uh, rare in medicine into the market, a large pharma company uh, in Europe. Um, also, Lenis, a strong pharma distribution company working in the Balkan and the Baltics, uh, also representing Gilad Sciences as a full pharma capabilities. And OnyxCan, our partner in Brazil, who help us to be the first company who import a high THC formulation into Brazil, but also following with us on the registration and clinical trial for Canapil and Symmetra to the Latin American market. Our activities, of course, are followed by a company board and executive team, um, our existing board members, and our new executive team led by Ifat, our new CEO, coming from the pharma industry, uh, Angela Marie, our new CFO, opening the UK offices 
and Rob Clements, uh, who's coming also from the pharma industry. Alongside of the UK headquarters, we have, of course, uh, the existing team in Slovenia and Israel, who are all coming from the pharma industry and experience in the life uh, science sector. Um, aside of our board and executive, of course, as a pharma company, we have also our medical advisory team, who is coming from different uh, sectors and experience. Uh, all of them are supporting in the data and knowledge around the rare indication and unmet treatment, where it's a lead core of the company to lead in innovative medicine. As a pharma company and uh, leading in the life science sector, uh, as a company already achieved three drugs in clinical development, four drugs that are in preclinical development and larger portfolios that will make sure that we have a relevancy as a pharma company in the future. Uh, we're completing successfully two phase studies, Cognican and Symmetra, and we are entering into uh, phase 2B with Canapil. Uh, we have uh, we commenced a research and development site uh, in Slovenia and in Israel, together with acquisition of Medicanel. Uh, we have finished the acquisition of an AI platform, I'll say, to allow us to give better treatment to our patient through the clinic, but also to retrieve more data about our medicine and future medicines that we want to get into development. And listing can appeal on the Irish health system and obtaining full health insurance coverage. This is a key milestone for the company, again, to provide a good, affordable, uh, plant-inspired medication uh, for very rare or untreated indication. Uh, our four leading products are uh, Symmetra, um, products that designed as anti-inflammatory, started as a COVID treatment, uh, potential treatment for COVID-19 and prevention the cytokine storm. But I will move uh, the knowledge about our product and commercial side to Rob, who is our Chief Commercial Officer. Thank you, Robbie. Um, yes, just just uh, good morning and good evening to everyone from me. Uh, just a couple of brief minutes here on, on our portfolio. Um, we, uh, as Robbie has already alluded to, we have a complex and exciting portfolio of investigational medical products taking us forward. Um, Symmetra, Canapil, Cognican, and uh, Unican being the first four. Um, specifically when it comes to Symmetra uh, as our first candidate. Um, Symmetra is based on our experience previously developing um, a herbal supplement in the form of Artemic, but is in fact a uh, unique formulation of curcuma and boswella. I think what's really important about uh, products like this is the context in which they have been developed. The anti-inflammatory effect of um, Symmetra is really about long COVID initially and then other post-viral syndromes. Long COVID affects approximately one in 10 people have ever suffered from COVID. The CDC in the United States estimates roughly 4 million Americans have lost wages and can't work because of long COVID. And that represents up to 1% of American GDP. So there is a macroeconomic and a political environment to go around just the simple mechanics of developing the drug. Uh, if you gross that up, that's $250 billion a year of lost economic activity because of post-viral fatigue with one virus. We are very excited that we uh, will be going into FDA IND submission early in 2023. Uh, we'll open further phase three across 2023, and we look to complete our phase two in the first half of um, um, 2024. So this is our lead candidate, our lead product, where we're focusing our efforts first of all, but uh, it's in the tip of the iceberg in terms of MGC. If I can have my next slide, please. Thank you. Um, another flagship product for us, of course, is Canapil. Now, Canapil is for refractory epilepsy with two active ingredients. The development of products in epilepsy is a well-trodden path but drug resistant epilepsy represents 25% of all epileptic patients, a lot of whom are young people and children suffering from multiple fits. It's horrific. Um, the phase 2B has been approved. We will be recruiting patients 
in the first quarter and first half of 2023. And in addition, because there's such an unmet medical need here, we have made this drug available through an early access program with our partners at Sciences Rare, um, the international arm of Sciences, to make sure that patients across the UK, across Europe, and across many parts of the world will be able to receive this uh, under the early access schemes of their local governments and therefore receive the treatment they need while we take the time to complete the development fully. Um, moving on, Cognican is uh, the next product which the, we will finish the development of once we get over the line with one of the first two, taking a step at a time to demonstrate that we are making sure we complete one thing and before we start the next. Cognican is very exciting again. Um, it's hard with Alzheimer's, but it is estimated that 55 million, maybe 60 million people worldwide have Alzheimer's at the moment. Uh, as I'm sure many of you are aware, you can only really uh, diagnose Alzheimer's post-mortem. So it could be different forms of dementia or different vascular dementias or whatever. But the estimate is for 55 million people uh, worldwide. It's a horrible disease, uh, a very high burden of care. And, is, and of course sucks in a large team of carers, as well as economic pressure, as well as family destruction. And they estimate that, that, that the cost of really caring for uh, Alzheimer's patients worldwide is about a trillion dollars. That's the size of the Dutch economy. And it's an area where there are still very few drugs that make a substantial difference. Now, Cognican, will be about behavioral modification and helping people to live more comfortably. And we believe that that will be a very important development um, when, we, um, when we get to the point of MA with Cognican. So that's the next exciting chapter for us. And then the fourth and final product that I want to talk about at this point is Ernican. Uh, Ernican is for geoblastoma. Now, half of all brain tumors are geoblastomas. Um, geoblastoma kills 10,000 Americans, approximately 10,000 Europeans every year. If this is an unmet medical need, I don't know what is. This is substantial, this is important, this is great science. And we are very lucky that our development team has a wealth of knowledge in the compounds that have gone in to develop the ENICAN. And so after, uh, our t after Symmetra, after Canapil and then after Cognican, around the same time, you'll see great steps forward with Ernican as we take that forward to what I believe is a therapy class changing treatment. Um, and Robbie, I will pass back to you. Uh, and when you may even allude to the, uh, the greater potential we have in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. And just to summarize, we have Symmetra as our leading product uh, during phase three and phase two B studies looking to get uh, into the American market with the submission of an IND early 2023, uh, followed by Cognican, who just finished his phase two studies, and by Canapil, who is entering into his phase two B studies, and also as part of our leading group. Uh, on top of them, we have Irnikan, an additional product in our R&D development uh, that will maintain our company relevancy in the pharma sector uh, for years to come. I would say as part of our product, we have, of course, our market access network and a sales platform uh, looking on the American market together with AMC, on the Latin, uh, Brazil and Latin America, together with Onyx. Of course, a uh, key compound is a work with Sciences Rare and Lenis on the European market, uh, entering into the Irish uh, market with Pacelli, and also working on the MENA, the Middle East and North African countries, uh, together with Sciences Rare, we get a good coverage on uh, the main countries and again, especially the American and the European uh, territories with FDA and MI approval for our products. Um, the company, as we mentioned, have a diversified research uh, hub and a very integrated in-house that allow us to manage our clinical trials, allow us uh, to be much more cost effective and efficient in our clinical development, but also potentially to use it as a catalyst to bring a new fund into the company by providing third parties uh, research management support 
And this is done by uh, Nadia Lissovoda, our chief medical officer, her and her team in Medical Nell. Aside of that, we recently completed the construction and now we're in the commencement and uh, the final stage of our GMP to our new Maltese facility uh, that uh, has been highly supported by Malta Enterprise and the Maltese government. Uh, was achieved to be constructed during the COVID uh, pandemic with our team. And this facility, besides it being uh, basically an EU GMP fully automated facility, it will be able to provide our internal needs of production uh, to cover the early stages of the American and the European market. But also, for the meantime, we'll be able to provide uh, third party production capability, which again, will allow us to enter additional revenue stream to the company as a proper pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing capabilities. A few words on our ZAM, our medical app that we recently completed the acquisition. ZAM will enable us uh, a B2B platform between uh, doctors and the company and the clinics, and basically will allow doctors to give uh, better treatment and long understanding uh, on the medical history uh, of their patient and monitor the drug users. So first of all, we'll give a better approach and capability tools uh, to our clinician and to our clinics, but also uh, to license it to other clinics around the world that want to give better treatment to their patient. But internally for MGC, the AI and the data collecting platform will allow us to improve our medicine, our understanding about the safety and efficacy of our medicine, uh, countering different drugs, and allow us to uh, provide a better file when we're submitting uh, to the FDA and EMA, and learning our drugs and new drugs in a better way. Uh, of course, beside of being uh, with a new transition as a pharma company in the life science, we're still keeping our medical cannabis sales as our uh, revenue generating and our bread and butter of the company. Um, to date, over the past 12 months, uh, this department generate 2.4 million pound, which is circa of around more than 80,000 different units being sold around the globe. Uh, we are providing still cannabis flower in Australia. Uh, we're providing uh, vape as a new way of consuming medical cannabis in Australia and recently also in Brazil, we still have our MP production line, which are generic formulation uh, that are being provided to different indication. And of course, MGC Nutraceuticals uh, with Artemic, which the originated product uh, that the upgrade of it uh, arrived to Symmetra, and we're providing it also through our partners with Swiss Pharmacan in Europe and other territories. So. Even as a pharma company, we're still keeping it at the moment as our uh, revenue generating platform um, that continue and support our activities. And as we say, as a pharma company, our key milestone that we're looking for 2023 will be first of all, entering into the American market together with AMC and submitting our IND to the FDA as part of uh, the process uh, that we're currently doing. Uh, we will ramp up the sciences where early patient access uh, activity, which will mostly will allow us to generate more data on our patient around the world and allow us to get uh, early knowledge and awareness to our product in different territories, which afterwards will be used as uh, marketing uh, activities once we get marketing authorization. Uh, we will commission uh, the Malta facility to utilize our in-house production need, but also to provide outside services. We'll continue the development of Canapil through the phase 2B studies and other early patient access scheme as we did in Ireland and the UK. We'll progress uh, in the remain of the clinical uh, trial uh, development and the enrollment uh, of additional users to our ZAM app. And by that, I would like uh, to thank you all uh, for the support in the company and in our activities around the world and allow us to develop and to provide a unique medication to the market. Um, I will pass it back to Brett uh, to conclude the meeting. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, thank you, Rob, um, for that presentation and uh, update on the, the company's uh, activities and our, uh, importantly, our, our, our um, strategy as we move forward as a 
fully fledged and focused life sciences and pharma company. Um, at the conclusion of the, the company presentation, I'll now just uh, um, look to uh, answer any uh, questions that have been put forward by shareholders. Um, Tim, are there any new, new questions that have come in during the meeting? Or? Yeah, we've had a couple of new ones in the meeting, um, some of which you covered off in right. the presentation. Okay. Um, so the questions that we've had, starting with is when about the multi operation, whether we are planning, I think it's sort of covered off. Yeah, maybe we'll just uh, thank you, Tim. First, that first question was just on the shareholders put in on questioning the Malta new Malta facility when it will be up and running. Rob, would you like to give it just a quick um, yes? We're now overview. we're now completing uh, the GMP process and commissioning, so we're looking to get the Maltese facility up and running in early 2023 uh, with the ability to produce uh, the need of our Temic for the American market and afterwards the Metra and can appeal to follow during 2023. And also, I think an important point there is that from our, um, as we move to ramp, ramp up our operations and our production of our own products in Malta in 2023, um, there is the ability for this facility, which is be fully fully automated, can produce um, uh, about 20, yeah, over 20,000 units a day, about 8,000 units a shift that we can look to actually use that for third party production to generate a revenue stream while for, for third party um, uh, pharmaceutical companies for their products whilst we're bringing our own uh, commercial scale of production online. Uh, we've also a question on uh, the status of the current clinical trials which I think is yeah, I think the status of the clinical trials was probably mainly covered. Uh, submission of our IND submission for Symmetra in the US um, is targeted for uh, Q1. Um, we were aiming to have that completed by the end of this year. Um, but like most things, everything at the moment around the world is just taking a little bit longer uh, to get things uh, completed. But we're uh, very confident that will be submitted in, in Q1 um and hopefully earlier in q1 uh and if and, and on that we see that as being a major milestone and value creation point for the company uh it's widely acknowledged in the industry as a submission of uh and registration of an ind uh is 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 exactly that for a pharma business so it's a very exciting catalyst and a milestone for the company that's uh, coming up is there anything else on the clinical trials robbie you'd like to yeah, touch we're, on we're progressing we just uh uh, we completed the first review with our uh, advisors in the United States and we in conversation with the FDA. We're completing a gap uh, analysis uh, of trial. And the fact is that we were able to see that we are not being requested to redo our clinical trials uh, in Israel and in India for Symmetra. Uh, it just demonstrates the level and the quality, but also that all of our products are designed from the beginning to meet the FDA and EMA guideline and they uh, will proceed as follow. Great. Um, building on that, and I guess you slightly touched on it again, with meditation, an update on AMC and science and sciences in relationship with those and the, um, the contract with AMC. Sure. Maybe, Rob, would you like to just give a quick um, sort of overview on, on um, sciences and, and AMC? And Sure. Um, Yes, the um, the relationship with Sciences, um, which was put into place this year, um, covers um, most of um, Western and the EU in terms of Europe, as well as North African and Middle Eastern territories. Um, we are working alongside them. When you bring when you bring uh, cannabis-based medicines in on an early access program, you need government approval. There's uh, quite a lot of paperwork involved. And so we have worked with them to make sure that in the UK home office approval will be granted. Um, and they are rolling out a country at a time in Scandinavia, in Denmark, uh, in Italy. And then the, the markets will cascade from there. Um, uh, as I say, it's to me, it, it, early access is about unmet medical needs. So we are making sure that we're making the right products available at the right time and that all the data are in place. So that relationship will grow throughout 2023 and 24. Um, with regard to AMC, um, we are working alongside them on the IND for North America. Uh, and then 
post granting of that IND, we will be looking to expand our operations in North America in terms of actually producing uh, product on the ground to make sure again that we reach. Uh, it's all about our medical need in the US as well post COVID, and um, and so both relationships are very strong. Uh, there's an exchange of scientific and uh, commercial knowledge between us and our partner companies as we go. Um, and they're both really great relationships to take us forward into the next 18 months, two year period of uh, consolidation and growth. Um, and then just to recap, we mentioned FDA approval and implementation that start, starts next year. Is that, is that right? With the IND submission, IND yes, submission. correct. Correct. Q1. Um, and then finally, last question um, is broadly about current financial health of the company, whether, and I'm not sure if you want to put this out, but there's a cash flow positive target date to um, We do have that, but it's not public information. Um, obviously, uh, in terms of the financial health of, of the company, I mean, it's no surprise that the company uh, doesn't have a cash balance at the moment that would currently fully, other than the, the existing facility, equity facility that's in place uh, to fulfil our long-term needs. Yeah. With all the other infrastructure that's in place now that we've touched on with team, with people, um, with uh, GMP certified, R&D and production facilities um, with the commercial and scientific relationship with Sciences Rare and AMC in those key markets. We have everything in place. Our next uh, you know, next key task of the board is to, uh, to ensure that we have the proper and the appropriate funding in place for us to meet our, our goals and our targets, uh, which we've outlined um, in, in the last half an hour or so, uh, and we're working on that. Great. That's all the questions um, uh, to all the shareholders who have joined us here and uh, online. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much for your support. Um, it's, a, a, you know, it's, it's a long journey in the, uh, as we all know, in the biopharma or pharma space, uh, but the, the, the rewards at the end of the day uh, are, are huge for all those involved. Um, and that's, you know, that's the path we know it's going to be, it's not an easy path. Um, like most of uh, you know, life and uh, business, um, there's always uh, um, uh, hurdles to get over. Um, but the hurdles that we've tackled and the challenges we've overcome, and the the, um, the milestones that we've achieved in the last 12 months, gives us the board and hopefully our shareholders uh, confidence in the in the path that we're heading uh, and our strategy and our ultimate goal uh, as we see it over the next two to three years. Now as a as a fully fledged life sciences and pharma company um, based here in Europe, UK and Australia. Thank you very much for your time. Brett, that's great. If I may just jump back in there. Thank you very much indeed to the board for updating attendees online uh, this morning. Could I please ask attendees online not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the board can better understand your views and expectations. This won't take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure it'll be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the board of MGC Pharmaceuticals Limited, we would like to thank you for attending today's annual general meeting. That now concludes today's session, so good morning to you all.